the Explorer Scientific 127 F7.5 FCD100 carbon fiber triplet refractor telescope with a two and a half X focuser FCD100. What in the world does that mean? Stick around as we talk about that very telescope. Everybody. So welcome back and thank you for joining us. I am of course Mark with Midwest Astron. Today we're talking about the telescope that I've been using since March. So this isn't a out of the box, here's what you get. This is a out of the box, here's what I've gotten in the last few months. So it is of course called the Explorer Scientific 127 millimeter F7.5 ED airspace triplet refractor telescope which has Hoya FCD100 optics for beautifully sharp and high contrast images. The optical tube assembly is made of carbon fiber, right? It's in the title. It includes an integrated dew shield on one end and a two and a half hex focuser or hexagonal dual speed 10 to one ratio Crayford style focuser on the other. The telescope includes a cradle ring with a built-in handle, which I have to tell you comes in super handy when you're carrying this thing around because it is somewhat heavy and a Vixen style dovetail plate that attaches to the mount with a Vixen or CG5 style saddle. It also comes with the Explorer Scientific two inch diagonal with 99% reflectivity to complement the optics of this incredibly portable classic style refractor. The hybrid fighter scope base can accept all legacy Explorer Scientific finder scope brackets. Now, what does that actually mean? That means that most finder scopes aren't going to fit in this. You have to have the Explorer Scientific piece, which honestly, I personally find obnoxious that they would do it that way, but it promotes you to buy their particular products. I don't like it. I don't use it. That's why I added some features that allow me to use whatever I want universally. But let's keep going about this. So we can sit here and name off all of the facts. So why don't I just simply come over here and I'm going to list all of the actual tech details are going to scroll through here and you can read those at your own leisure. You can pause and take a moment and actually look through everything from the weight to the focal length to the ratio, all of that. So that's all going to be over here on the side. You probably want to know what my findings and my thoughts are. And here it is. The Explorer Scientific in two words, worth it. This telescope has the ability to provide a strong array of options from native F7.5 focal length all the way down to a reduced F5.2 and 666 millimeters of focal length. This telescope provides all the opportunities that you need in astrophotography or even as a visual observer that you simply would need. While I have not actually used this for visual astronomy purposes, which I have to be honest, I haven't used any of my telescopes for visual astronomy because I take astrophotography. Um, and that's the main purpose of this video. But from all of the reviews that I've read about the visual astronomy part of this telescope, looking up at the night sky, uh, I've yet to see anybody talk about a bad experience with this particular telescope. So I can only assume that what others are saying have to be true because I've been very content with everything else about this telescope. Now, just to give you a little background about why I actually got this telescope to begin with, and then we'll talk about some of the final results is, um, honestly, I've always been a reflector man, right? I've always had a Newtonian and I've always loved my results. I truly do prefer my 10 inch Newtonian when able above all else any day of the week. Now, once I found out that my wife and I were actually gonna have a baby, I had to sit back and look at this hobby entirely and holistically that I love. 
I had to look at ways to make things easier and faster. I had to look at all of my options and to make this hobby be as simple as possible. Otherwise, I was truly at risk of not having the time to do it at all. And as you know, this hobby truly does require a fair amount of time to do it between um, the setup, the imaging and the processing and the reprocessing and the posting of social media, making videos, I mean, you name it. Everything takes a substantial amount of time at the end of the day for just a single image. I could spend as much as 60 hours producing a final image that's coming to your screen here. And it was at this point when I looked at the telescope option, I needed something that was gonna be a little more simple, but then I also looked at this particular telescope because one, carbon fiber has always caught my eye, whether it be on a vehicle um, or in this case, a telescope. And it just seemed like a great fit when you put into context the Midwest um, temperature inversions and just the, the deltas between the hottest point of the day and the coldest point of night. For example, just the other day, it was like 75 degrees during the day and it dropped all the way down to, to about 33 degrees overnight, which is almost zero degrees Celsius, right? It, it went from a beautiful day to, um, I mean, winter conditions in a single day. That's how fast everything can change here. So again, it just had a great fit here, especially in the Midwest. When looking at a telescope that offered more of a plug and play approach versus my Newtonian and the opportunities that that would give me, I honestly had just decided, you know what, a refractor has got to be the way I go. I wasn't always going to have time to sit there and collimate, um, you know, no matter how fast it was, right? A Newtonian only takes a matter of seconds to truly collimate, but it just, it boiled down to the fact of you have to do it and you have to do it every single night. And the reason being is because a reflector telescope just simply can lose its collimation, especially Newtonian after every single night of flipping and flopping. Whereas an RC is going to hold it definitely a lot better, but you still have to collimate it. And an RC collimation does take time. It could take you 20, 30 minutes, or for some people it can take hours. So I just simply didn't have the ability to spend an hour or so collimating even that RC style telescope. So that's why I decided not to even go for the RC. The refractor route honestly just seemed to make the most sense. And I found this particular focal length appealing because it was much like my Newtonian at a thousand millimeters. This is 952 millimeters of focal length. So then with that particular focal length, that was appealing. And then a chance to reduce it to even widen my field of view also came into play, right? I wanted to have a dual purpose telescope, one that can both look far, but I can then reduce it and get a broader field of view. And then I found that I could get a flip flat for this particular telescope, which allowed me to then program Nina to shoot my flats for me at the end of every single session. I no longer have to shoot my own flats. If you are an astrophotographer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It can be frustrating taking good flats at times. It's not always as simple as just throwing the shirt on and shooting. You have to adjust your lighting. You have to adjust how many shirts you have in some cases, right? No longer do I have to do that with this Optech flip flat. So for me, it was a no brainer. This was going to be my telescope setup and I was going to make it work for me. I was going to make sure I got everything I needed to make this a good telescope setup for what I was looking to do. So enough of me talking about why I got it. Let's actually go ahead and look at some of the results that I've gotten with this particular telescope. I'm going to start off with looking at two images of the same galaxy. The one on the left was taken with a Celestron C11 with a 0.63 reducer with the ZWO ASI 294 mm and i was binned at three by three versus the explore scientific 127 at native focal length in the zwo asi 2600 mm pro where i was only binned one by one with asi 294 mm pro i was right about 0.81 arc seconds per pixel whereas the asi 2600 mm pro i was also right at about 0.81 arc second per pixel. So therefore my framing was not quite the same, but the actual specs about how this was shot were almost identical, despite it being a different camera entirely. The field of view was much larger, obviously, for the Explore Scientific 127, but otherwise the pixel ratio was relatively the exact same. 
So the biggest difference for this particular thing that I saw was the smaller and more faint items were more visible with the C11. And that's simply because it's got an 11 inch aperture, right? It's gonna allow in more light, but just because it allows in more light doesn't necessarily mean it's resolving it. So, however, likely due to the conditions of, you know, my skies, sometimes they're not always favorable. The results were actually better ever so slightly in my opinion with the explore scientific 127 than with the c11 which had six more inches of aperture this is a prime example of the fact that just because a longer focal length exists and you use it doesn't mean that you're actually going to necessarily get a better image the five inch or 127 millimeter aperture telescope yielded a wonderful result in comparison despite having the disadvantage of less focal length and aperture both to the c11 but after shooting this distant galaxy and comparing my results i knew i found a winner with this telescope i did go ahead and take off the stock focuser I think it's fair to say that just about everybody's stock focuser is probably just okay, right? It's nothing special. It's nothing to brag about. It's okay. It does the job. But I decided that since I'm making this as simple as I can and I'm turning it into my own custom telescope that I'm going to use for quite a while, that I wanted to upgrade certain components and I wanted the best. So one problem that I had with the stock focuser is it didn't rotate smoothly. And I don't know if that was because I bought this second hand or not, but I think a screw was actually inside of the tube grinding a little bit as the focuser rotated. And it wasn't really a clean design in my opinion. Since I decided this was going to be my telescope though, I decided to go ahead and upgrade the focuser to a much higher quality moonlight focuser right the moonlight focuser fit perfectly into place on the first try and has given me zero issues since the actual install and overall this telescope has given great results to me so now everybody talks about why they got into this hobby and what it is they try to get out of it and for me honestly i just i just love looking at what's in the night sky and sharing it with you guys with friends and with family and I mean, look at this, it's beautiful. Now with this particular scope, one of the key things when people decide what they wanna get is quality. And I think I've gotten just that. And for example, I have actually managed to receive as a winner two different times, ZWO's Astronomy Picture of the Week. And I've also been featured by NASA's Astronomy Photo of the Day social media accounts six times since having this telescope. The first four images alone that I took with this telescope made NASA's feature. This telescope is the foundation of a good image, yes, but other supporting things like a good camera um, can make a huge difference too. Uh, paired with a monochrome camera in particular though, this telescope will likely exceed all of your expectations. I also wanted to note two more items. Floor Scientific did not ask me to do this, nor did I get some free telescope to do this review for free. Number two is I don't endorse crap products. So if you see me reviewing a product, just know that if I give it my stamp of approval, it's because it's not crap, it's actually worth it. It's worth it for me and it could be worth it for you. So for this scope, it's worth it. Now. The only flaw that I can actually note with this particular telescope, other than maybe the focuser, is gonna be the dew shield design. I don't know what it is about this particular telescope, but if I don't have my dew heater straps on really tight, this dew shield will slide all the way back down the OTA. There is nothing to prevent it. Some people will use a locking screw or, or some measure that keeps it in place, but with this particular telescope, you have to supply something to prevent it from sliding. I've seen this in online forums as well. It is the number one complaint that I can find with this particular telescope and there's no fix for it. So that is definitely a flaw with their design. I give this telescope definitely five out of five stars, uh, no pun intended. 
So with that, enjoy the pictures, but also in the comments below, let me know what your experience has been with this telescope or let me know what you found helpful in this review. But until next time, clear skies, take care of each other, and we'll see you next time.